Well, now that we have our valve body all figured out and ready to go, we can move on to the rest of the transmission. I think I'm just going to start with pulling this overdrive housing off first. It's just these bolts around the outside here, and then you just lift it, comes right off, and then we can check out the overdrive brake and direct clutches. So yeah, just pull it, comes right off, no problem at all. And then you got like a bearing here, and then this is your overdrive piston here. It fills the fluid and pushes out to activate the overdrive brake clutch here. Holy, this thing's heavy. So there should be a snap ring right here. What do we do by hand? Pull the snap ring out. We get some clutches. Well, we got steel. And then we got some clutches. And then we got another steel. Hey, wow, it's like brand new. Whoa. Yeah, these are good. Okay, I'm gonna pull them all out because it's kind of hard to do with one hand. There you go. Got the rest of the clutches and the seals out of there, and you can see they all look like they're in pretty good condition, actually. You can tell when they're bad because they, they look all burnt and they got like weird lines and stuff in them. Yeah, these ones are great though. We could definitely put these back in. And you can see there's one, two, three, four, five pairs of clutches and steels, and then a big one at the end. And you can actually upgrade the amount of steels in here. Steels and clutches, you just use a different size plate and then you can change that around, but yeah. Otherwise, I'm gonna continue on here and pull these rest of these snap rings out of here. We gotta... Looks like a straight snap ring. Pretty sure that was supposed to be wavy first. But it could be wrong. And then we got a wavy snap ring. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go the other way around, but I'll have to go look it up and make sure, because the last one I did was the other way around. I just looked this up real quick, and these are definitely wrong, because I pulled the straight one out first, and then the wavy one came out. But it should be the other way around. It should be the straight one in there and the wavy one on the outside. So I don't know if that really affect how the transmission worked. It doesn't really matter either way. I'll put it back together the right way. So now I can come over here and take these two screws out and then there's like a snap ring in there and you can unsnap it and then it falls, all this stuff falls out of here. And we can go from there. So you just pull this cover off here from right there. And then there's a snap ring in there that you can just snap. I already did it because it's kind of tricky. And then you can just pull this whole cover off. And there's nothing else left in there. Well, other than other than the seal on the back. And that's easy to replace. And then the rest of the clutches are in here. But we need a press to be able to get them out of there. You can see there's a snap ring right there. And then you need to like compress this down, take the snap ring off, and then let it out. Well, you're supposed to use a press to do this, but I can't fit a press in my truck. So I just built this. And it seems to work really well, actually. And uh, yeah, just use my impact on the top. And compress it down. Pull the clip out of there. And then I've got lots of threads to be able to go as high as I need. As you can see, it didn't really come very high. Well, I just pulled that piece out of there. And then took all the clutches off. And as you can see, they're pretty much brand new too. You can even see the numbers are still kind of on there. So that's that's a great sign too. We can basically just throw that back in there. So you see that spring is inside there. And then just in here, we just have a bearing. Fair enough. And we got this plan planetary set here. Get it out with one hand. Oh, I can't do it with one hand. One sec. There you go. I just grabbed that planetary set out of there. 
And then we just got this like one way roller thinger in here. See, it only lets it spin one way. And then, yeah, just these clutches. They all look good. Not worried about those in any way. We can basically just throw this whole thing back together and we're good to go on the overdrive section. There's really no issues in there except for that one clip on the other side of this was the wrong way. I mean, the wavy and the straight were mixed around. So yeah, I guess we'll just continue on to this guy and then see what's going on in there. Well, I'm just compressing this thing back in there now. Just try to keep it nice and even. Need to hold my crescent wrench. I think I might just weld little weld these nuts on the bottom and keep it like this because I like this tool. Works good. That uh, overdrive piston out of the way. You can see the seal here and another one on the inside and a bearing, and spacer, spacer thing. So now I gotta flip this thing over so I can pull the oil pump off and then uh, everything out from inside. Well, first of all, we just got to kind of loosen these band adjustments and front one, the rear one, and kind of take them out of there, and then you can pull this stuff out and get it all out of the way. And then once we pull out these bolts, it just kind of all flops out. There's that oil pump. Got that off of there. A couple seals and gaskets to check. Then we can pull this drum out of there. That looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't really see any crazy scratches on it. Same with the band. Lots of friction material left. Oh, it looks really good. We got the uh, third gear direct clutches in here. So we'll check those out right now, I think. These just spline onto here, and there's another set of clutches in there. Normal flat snap ring. Oh, I always suck at doing this with one hand. Big thick pressure plate thing. Oh man, these clutches don't look too bad either. You can still see the words on there. So as you can see, all these clutches are looking pretty good as well. Well, that's a good sign. And it's just this thick pressure plate on the end and then all the same size steels. And then there's your apply, plus, apply piston down in there. So might as well get this stuff out of the way and we'll tear this uh, forward clutch pack down. We'll try to get these ones out now. See how that goes. I don't know, throw one away on me. There we go. These ones should be okay, I think, because it's mostly just in use when you apply reverse. Come on. Big thick pressure plate. And brand new clutches again. Wow. That looked pretty good to me. Well, those forward clutches look pretty good. To be expected though, they really only come into use when you hit reverse gear. So I guess we'll get these things out of the way and we'll keep going here. Get this band out of here. And then, yeah, pull this 
next thing out of here. Oh yeah, don't forget these. Don't want to lose those. Just pull that thing straight out of there. And you can see now there's a uh, snap ring in here. So we'll get that out of there. And it just disengages this drum from this piece. So you can see here I just pulled this snap ring off and this other little piece. And you can pull this drum out. Looks pretty good, no crazy scratches or wear marks. And we can see what's going on with this rear band here. Looks pretty good. Lots of material left. There we go, got everything out of there. Got my one-way roller bearing system out of there too. And I pulled off the overdrive um, piston housing right there. It also gives you access to change this if you need to. Access to everything else now too if you need to change anything. So yeah, that's basically it. Now we can just clean everything up and uh, replace what we need to and check all our seals and stuff like that. So the last thing I need to do for a manual valve body conversion is just install a new spring, if it fits, and a new spacer right here, and plug that hole. And none of the springs fit, so I'm going to reuse the stock one. And this spacer I can put in there, that's no problem at all. Just take off the snap ring, and it goes in there. And then that's basically ready to go, I put that back in. And I got this plug, smash that in there, and I might as well just take out this last piston here just to make sure everything's good in there and there's no issues. And then we just gotta start cleaning everything up. Well, now that I've checked all my pieces and I made sure all my seals are good and my bearings are all ready to go, basically just gotta put it all back in now. Use lots of lube so it doesn't eat itself up when it first starts up. But yeah, other than that, we can just start getting parts and feeding them in there. That in there, and then we can put this back piece on there, and then through the uh, one-way roller bearing, and then this whole drum and the rear band can all go in there. Just through that overdrive piston housing thing in there. And we got a band, rear band in here. Tightens up, works properly. Still needs to be adjusted at the end, obviously. And then we can test our one-way roller thing here. It spins fine that way, it doesn't go the other way. We got our little snap ring and this little seat in here. So that's all good to go. Move on and then slam this thing in there. Go. I got my next piece in there with my two little washer bearing things. Everything spins freely and nice and just use lots of lube. And we'll just yeah continue on putting these parts back in. It's pretty straightforward at this point because I when I take it apart, I take it apart in order. And then if I want to rebuild and check this stuff, I take it over here, completely bust it apart, check everything, put it back together, and then put it back over here. So you there's not really any guessing, you know it's going to go back together correctly. You're just kind of feeding the parts in there at this point. Next piece is in there, just slots into this little area here and then the uh, band clamp thingers, they're in there too. Now we just need to grab the oil pump assembly and put it back on there. There we go, got all that stuff in there. Oil pump is on, torque down. So I might as well move on to our valve body. 
get him back in there. Just gotta make my pressure adjustment real quick. So I just set my pressure adjustment real quick. I went with three turns on the adjustment screw here. And you can see it's about, if you can see, it's about quarter inch in now off the end. So yeah, that thing's, come on focus. That thing's ready to go. Just about to put it back in here. Don't forget your uh, spring and shift accumulator too. Some some of them have a spring under here, and some of them have a spring on top, some of them have both, so yeah, just pay attention when you pull yours apart. Yeah, otherwise that goes like that, and we can throw that valve buddy back on. Well, it's just making my rear band adjustment there, and uh, just slipped a little bit. Cut the end of my fingers off on this sharp aluminum. Oh well. Yeah, well I got my rear band adjustment made there, it's good to go. I just gotta make my front band adjustment now. Just following the directions. Let me get that pan on there. Oh my god, we're leaking blood everywhere. Okay, we gotta get this fixed. Well I got my finger all sorted out here, it's good to go. Finish making my front band adjustment. And this one's good to go, that's for sure. I just followed the exact directions right here. So now, yeah, I can basically put that pan back on. It makes it a little easier to flip it over and then I can get that overdriver housing figured out. Well, I got that uh, filter on there, so everything's good to go under there now. I just got a new pan gasket, cleaned everything up. Nice clean magnet. So yeah, slam that on there and we'll start working on that overdrive housing. Got that pan on there ready to go. Got my overdrive housing nice and cleaned up. Looking good and the clutch is ready. And I got the other clutches compressed in here already and basically ready to go put in. Oh yeah, and when you're Compressing those in there, make sure you line up all the splines that are inside there because then you'll get to putting this thing back together and you can see there's like a line here because there's two sets of splines. If they don't line up, it's not going to go on. So yeah, what I do is I just use this output shaft assembly thing here while the transmission's taken apart. I just use that to keep this lined up while I'm compressing it and then it just goes right on. Drop that thing in there and just kind of wiggle the snap ring around until it seats into place, and then yeah, we're good to go. Start getting these clutches put in there. Well, I really hate messing around with that park rod on the inside of here. So, for this, I just like kind of clip it in first gear so as I'm lowering this, it doesn't move around at all, and then you can just kind of play with it with a screwdriver or the park rod, move it into place, and then you'll feel it. It'll fall, it'll go through here, and then it'll be further down here. And then after, you'll be able to go through all your gears, and it's just not affected by that in any way. Because it works by going through it, and when you're in all your gears, you're past it, and then when you go into park, it pulls back in into the little notch. So yeah, now that I can go through all my gears, and that's like that, I'll just cinch it down. It'll probably just go down. Yeah, just tighten it down and it'll be good to go. Well, that's it. It's all back together, ready to go. I don't have any pieces left over or anything like that. And yeah, uh, the owner just needs to get a new torque converter. I'm pretty sure that's on its way. And he's he's got some crazy setup with like dual transfer cases behind it on this crazy off-road Cummins rig. It's pretty cool. I'll have to make a video when it's all running and driving to show you what's going on. But yeah, that's about it for this video. So make sure you go subscribe and like all my videos and all that stuff. And probably start working on this thing now.